Gambit lovers, chess mood. Today I am so excited to share with you a Gambit that's not even dubious, but still just as aggressive and exciting as some of the other ones we've looked at, and it comes from the French defense. And don't worry, if you're not a French player, this is still going to be a super fun and super educational uh, video. And so here, e5 and bishop to g5 are the two main moves in this position, played about equally. We're going to be looking at bishop to g5, threatening e5 on the next turn. And there's a lot of theory here with either takes or bishop to b4, but here we're going to be recommending to you what we're calling the McCutcheon Gambit in honor of the McCutcheon variation with bishop to b4. And here, white should play not bishop h4, because after g5, we're just going to be collecting a pawn. White's basically just a pawn down. But you can see what people are overwhelmingly playing, which is, even here, taking the knight, and then just taking this pawn. So... We have a big advantage if we recollect our pawn, and we're going to be playing bishop to b4, threatening to take back the pawn, because we will just be having a bishop pair if white lets us do that. And so white here has three moves, bishop to c4 to cover this pawn, or bishop to b5, check, uh, or just pawn takes e6, because otherwise we capture here. And after pawn takes e6, black can play just bishop takes e6, and they have some compensation with knight c6, castles, bring the rooks to the center, all is good. But instead, I'm going to recommend to you the very fun, the very exciting, just castles. We're just going to castle our king. And most people are of the see upon, take upon variety. But we're going to cover here knight f3 and pawn takes f7. Both of which are playable moves for white. Pawn takes f7. Now we are down two pawns once we take this back. We could play rook takes, but I think eventually bishop to c4 is going to be a problem with our rook and our king on the same diagonal here. So we're going to play queen takes. And nonetheless, we threaten mate on f2, and so people overwhelmingly here play knight f3. Detroit, white needs to catch up in development, but the idea is we sacrifice two pawns for some very, very quick development. We're really going to try to get them on this e-file and prevent their castle. And one of the ways we can do that is with quick strikes, such as c5. c5 is a very good move, uh, and here white needs to be incredibly careful in order to survive. For example, if they play, as two people have, d takes c5. This is a fantastic position to pause the video and really think. This is a very difficult move to find. It has been found one time ever. It is bishop to h3. A crazy, crazy move. And the point of bishop to h3 is a couple things. It stops this bishop from developing, number one, in that we were just going to take g2. But okay, there's the obvious question of what if g takes h3? And here there's actually a fantastic game that I would love to show you. Okay. We simply take here, and not queen takes f3, offering to just trade queens into an endgame where, although white's pawn structure is terrible, they're still up a couple pawns, but rook e8 check. And the point is now, if bishop e2, we take this knight, the bishop blocked the queen, and this bishop is pinned onto here. So we're threatening the rook. Either way, they save the rook, rook g1, rook f1. We can simply play rook takes e2, a very nice tactic. Take c3, take that rook. Um, and it cannot be defended, after which black is simply a knight ahead. And so in the game, white plays king to d2, trying to cling on to their extra piece. Queen f4 check, king d3, only legal move. And now here, with white just having like no development, black simply, calmly, completes their development with knight c6, and white is completely lost, because rook d8 is either going to be check, or at the very least, win the queen. And so here white is completely lost. Bishop to g2 is played, but just rook d8. Using all of our pieces, and rook takes d4, it's checkmate next move. So, like a perfect game there by black to demonstrate the sheer power of bishop to h3. And it's really very, very difficult to play this with white. Queen e2, I believe, is the top choice of the engine to maintain equality, I will realize. But here, black can simply play knight to c6. I'm sorry, rook to e8 first. Queen e2 was the only way to stop rook e8. Now white needs to know to play an 85. We can trade here, but we're just going queen f6, putting a ton of pressure here. Knight c6 is coming as well. Uh, and this position is just very, very difficult to defend for white. You're not even going to want a castle over there because there's really no safety and white needs to be uh, incredibly precise here. f4, knight c6, we're just going to try to take that knight and really just use this e-file where the queen and the king are hiding. A more natural move like queen d2 falls to rook to e8 check because, again, bishop to e2 is impossible because it simply takes g2. 
And so it's very, very frustrating for, for white. They need to play king d1. And now simply a move like knight c6, where we don't care about this bishop. We're just trying to play rook d8. And it's very, very hard to defend. Again, white does not have bishop to d3 because of this pawn. So white needs to be very careful. I, I think d5 is also a move that looks very natural here against c5. d5 simply just not allowing things to open up not allowing our knight to take the square. It looks like white maybe just plays bishop e2 castles and survives with their extra pawn. But here bishop to h3 is even stronger than in the other position. Uh, for example, queen d2, rook e8, king d1. The issue here, the issue was c5. The pawn is no longer here to even allow knight e5 as like a temporary shield for white to have. So king d1 and then again knight c6. This doesn't even matter. Rook d8 is coming. All, all of black's pieces are playing fantastically. Of course, this capture is not possible. Rook d8 is coming. It's just a, a complete disaster of a position for white. Uh, this king needs to keep running to apparently just hang on. So our bishop to h3 resource is a very, very strong resource. Uh, and it's something we can do as soon as white loses this knight e5 uh, possibility. So bishop to e2, anyway, three out of five people have played. But the point of c5 wasn't wasn't just that we wanted them to do something, but we want to take it. Knight takes d4 is impossible because that's almost checkmate. So queen takes. And now knight c6 is a great way to develop. We tempo on the queen and we save our bishop here. And now where pretty much wherever white's queen goes, we're two pawns down. But wherever white's queen goes, we're going to be able to stop their castle. For example, let's say it just gets out of the way. Queen h4, as someone has played here. We can take this knight, sure. But the point is rook e8. And now with the pressure on this bishop, white is unable to castle because we will simply take that bishop. And otherwise, that's a very, very difficult problem to solve. Uh, you see here, king f1 was played. I believe king d2 might be slightly better. But it, it, in, in, any, in any situation, it really doesn't look like this is a super fun position for white to be playing with their king in the center of the board. I think we would agree to, we would much rather be playing black here. The top choice of the engine is queen to c4. It's, it's, I think this is a very unnatural maneuver. But the point is, bishop e6 is just a temple on the queen, but now going to h4. The point being that we don't have rook e8 to pressure this bishop, allowing white to be able to castle next turn. It's really not a huge deal. We can take this, simply bring our rook in. So, the, so they achieve their, their, their castling privileges. But after bishop to d5, this is a lot of pressure down these files and onto this knight. Um, for example, like this bishop is under attack now. And if it moves, of course, we're taking here. Otherwise, a move such as rook e1, I believe, allows some sacrifices. Uh, I'm sorry, the other rook to e1 allows some sacrifices. Uh, with rook takes e2, and bishop to c4. And here, um, black is doing completely fine. This One of these rooks is are going to be captured. We can keep following the engine's line. And queen takes a2. This pawn is hanging in, in every line. Uh, and this is pretty much the best that white can do if they find this. Very tricky queen c4, queen h4 maneuver, actually encouraging us to develop a piece. Otherwise, in this position of rook fd1, we can simply play rook e6 and continuing to put lots of pressure here. You see white needs to find this bishop to d3, allowing bishop takes f3 as a capture with like g takes f3 here. This is a very, very difficult position, I think, for, for white to be playing uh, in order to continue to follow all of Stockfish's recommendations. So queen c4 to, to, to bait into bishop e6 I don't think is a big problem. There's uh, queen d2, I think, is the most natural because rook e8 here now doesn't really do anything because this bishop is defended. White's able to castle, and that's really all they need. When they castle, they're okay. You know, they, they're protected by the pawns here. It's not They're not getting killed on these center files anymore, and they're just two pawns ahead. But queen d2, it's no matter. We just play rook d8 uh, with a knight defending the rook, attacking the queen. There's really nothing good for white to do here if they play bishop to d3. I think there's bishop to g4 or, rook, or, or simply rook d8 check in these positions, uh, and again, ruining White's castle. And as long as we were like able to ruin White's castle, we're doing good. That's definitely, in and of itself, compensation for two pawns, one pawn. It's a lot. It's the posi whole position where White's king is unsafe, their rooks can't be active, it's going to be an issue for them all the time, and we just have all the fun in the position. And, and again, queen c1 here, we can go back for key 8 attack this bishop. Again, they cannot castle because we simply win something. So... That pretty much covers uh, knight to f3 in this position. We we're going to play c5. If they react with either d5 or d takes c5, it gives us this bishop to h3 resource because they don't have this block. If they play bishop to e2, we take, play knight c6, and we make sure to put enough pressure on this bishop to uh, not allow them to castle. 
We'll note there's one other game here with bishop to c4, but here there's a nice little trick in the position. We're not training queens. We could just play bishop to e6. They can take it, but this position is uh, not looking good for white with the queen hanging, with check, with all the rooks coming into the game. So that covers e takes f7. A lot of people are playing knight to f3 and hoping to transpose back into the bishop takes e6 line, which will allow them to play bishop e2 in castles. However, our point was we don't want to put a bishop here. We want to use this e-file. So we're going to play rook e8. And now after bishop e2, which is really the only move to shield, d5 is not possible because the queen will take over here. But now queen takes e6. And now again, we have too much pressure on e2. Because if they castle, actually, it's crazy. That, that, that's the most common move in the position. But castling is just dropping a piece. It simply takes and takes the bishop over here. So... After queen takes e6, white needs to find some other solution to this position. The next most common move is queen d3. But here I'll recommend, and I'll note, castling long isn't on the table for them either. We, we're going to take this, we're going to take on e2. So they can't do that either. But we're going to play b6 here, threatening bishop to a6. And this position is already like very, very difficult for, for white to play. They should probably play queen e3, uh, offering us the pawn there. Um, and hoping that we'll give that to them. But bishop to a6 is going to put a lot of pressure on e2. Uh, queen d2 can run into very similar problems. Bishop d7 simply, threatening bishop to d5. Uh, putting a ton of pressure on this bishop, and really white should concede and play king to f1, after which we simply are going to bring our pieces into the game, use our excellent files. Knight to e5 has been played a lot of times. Uh, it is a resource because it's trying to castle, it's trying to block this. But it's not a good idea, because every time knight e5 comes up, pretty much, we're going to play c5, undermining this pawn. So here, I'll note, castling is impossible, because takes, we're attacking this knight, and we're attacking this knight. So just, for example, takes over here, uh, let's throw in bishop takes c3, and we'll let's win a piece. So c5, I think, really, like, this knight should should just go back. Uh, and this position is not looking good for, for white. d5 makes matters even worse, as you can see by the engine swing there. Queen coming back, there's no knight e5 anymore. Uh, knight d4 has been played one time, but c5 is a fantastic move here to attack this knight and make sure that uh, the knight can't support the bishop such that white can castle next turn, right? We never want to just like make a nothing move, allowing castling and allowing that bishop to be defended. Here, we're just a, a, a pawn down. But c5, uh, attacking the knight, so again, taking away their castling privileges by undermining that knight. Bishop a6 is coming, rook d8 is coming. In every line in here, we're, we're going to have pretty much all the fun in the world. So white does not have to play d takes e6, even though that's the most common move and I believe the recommendation of the engine, or at least initially. <laughs> but they have two other moves, bishop c4 and bishop b5, after which uh, we're either going to get our pawn back or at least achieve very good compensation for the pawn. So white can here play bishop to c4, uh, and we're going to castle. And now here white should know to play knight e2, because if they just play knight f3, we're going to take it, rook e8 check, and here, this king should uh, move, actually, because I believe if knight e5 is going to lose for a number of reasons, c5 I think is possible, knight d7 is possible. So we're going to make the king move, and every time we make the king move, that's an achievement, and we're doing well. We can just continue to develop our pieces uh, into the game. So knight e2 should be played, and after which we're going to play pawn takes d5, bishop takes d5. So knight e2 provides a shield along this file, rook d8 actually attacks this bishop because of the pin. And so here, if white castles, which is possible, because after takes, they can play knight takes, so it holds on to here. Castling got rid of this pin. But it's really no, no matter. I mean, this is like the best white can do. It's, it's equality. We're attacking the pawn here. If they don't want us to take the pawn, uh, it's too bad. We're, we're, we're going to take the pawn. Uh, and after which the position is equal. They can try hanging on to it with like, so d5, I think just bishop e6. We recollect that. We're doing well. Knight e2. It's a little bit greedy of them. C5, C3, take. So knight takes uh, just puts that knight into a pin. Not a good idea. And anyway, we play C5 here, uh, and there's queen takes B2. And here, I think this position is actually better for black. Uh, so white should probably not play like this and should probably just give us that pawn. Uh, white had another option after rook D8, which was bishop to F3, if they wanted to really try to cling on to this pawn. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal. We simply play knight c6, attacking this. And they have to play bishop takes c6, uh, or else we are just going to collect on d4. Bishop takes c6, queen takes, we can play. Threatening g2, and they castle. And here, after bishop f5, the position is very good for black. 
Uh, white has technically emerged with their extra pawn, but I think here, if the engine thinks about it, yeah, the engine does not like white's position at all. Simply, again, this is very, very easy for us to play. All of our pieces are always good and our king's always safe. We're never the one that's getting threatened. We're the one making the threats, right? And so we double our rooks here. We put a lot of pressure on d4. Neither of these knights can move, you'll note, because like the c2 pawn's hanging or the c3 is hanging. It's very hard for white to move around. Rook d7, rook d8, put a lot of pressure here. Bishop can come back. And black's bishop pair and rooks and all the pieces are playing very, very well in a position like that if white tries to go greedy. So that covers bishop to c4, trying to cling onto the pawn this way. There's bishop to b5 check, which is the second most common move in that position. Bishop to d7, and white should probably trade that because that bishop was hanging there. D takes e6 is the only way to uh, not lose the pawn now. Queen takes e6, and here white has two options which are pretty similar. They're knight e2 and queen e2. And in either of these lines, so let's say queen e2, we can simply trade this trade over here, and castle our king. Next moves are rook e8, knight b6, and here, like, we have files that white has some weak pawns, and white's advantage is, like, let's say castles, rook e8, white's advantage is very, very minimal here, uh, if at all, yeah, with uh, zeros by the engine. So that's pretty much what white could do if white uh, successfully dodges the gambits, but bishop to b5 check is not a hugely common move, as you see in the database. Um, knight e2 was possible, but again, take c3, and this position looks exactly the same as queen e2, except with the queens on the board. Castles, white's able to play it, but rook e8, knight b6 is coming, c5 is coming. What black has much, much better development here and is going to put some pressure on the pawns and has good compensation for the pawn here. So none of the, in none of the lines does white uh, successfully able to maintain a massive advantage or anything. And what I'd actually like to do in order to maybe demonstrate how to play against this is I am going to go to the board editor and I'm going to play out this line and you're going to see what I'm going to do next. H6, right? Takes, takes, takes d5. Let's see, like this is, this is the big scary stockfish recommendation, right? Is if they take all, all, all the way here on f7. So I'm going to play with black. So let's start the game. So I just wanted to prove to you guys, I'm going to give stockfish all the time in the world here. I'm going to put it at its highest level. These big scary numbers are really not so big and scary because the defenses that need to be found are sometimes too hard, even for stockfish itself, much less for a human. So queen to f3 is the first kind of crazy stockfish move. I think the human move and overwhelmingly shown in the database is knight to f3 in order to defend checkmate. The queen to f3 is an idea to try and trade queens. Of course, we don't want to do that because we're a pawn down and also we're trying to attack and it's very hard to attack if queens are off the board. So queen g6 threatened the c2 pawn and threatened the queen. White deals with both those with another queen trade proposal. We decline it with a move that looks good, but Stockfish thinks this is a blunder because it's check. And after we move our king, we're going to lose that bishop. But it was a intentional sacrifice. So this rook is hanging, but was now defended. And basically, White's issue is going to become, after I kick this queen one more time, they cannot castle over here. I nab that pawn. We're a piece down, but they cannot castle. And the question is, how do you ever get your king to safety? This bishop can't move because of g2 hanging. So knight f3 looks natural enough. But here I'm going to play rook d8 check. And here's where the tricky defenses have to start for white. So king d2 is force. Bishop e2 allowed bishop to d3. A fantastic use of this pin and attacking the queen there. So king d2, and now I'm going to keep the threats coming with rook d8. My point of rook d8 is I'm trying to take this knight and then play rook takes d4 check, winning the queen. And so here it's already difficult if you're white. Do you play king c1 to, to deal with that, or do you play d5? It's, it's going to be very, very hard for any human to defend this position. And the point is we're going to keep making threats and not making any, like, slow moves or whatever, which would allow white to, you know, bring in their pieces, get their king safe and consolidate, and then just be up a piece. So we need to keep making threats quickly before white's able to get other pieces into the game that might help them deal with those threats. So now b5 is kind of an interesting move. And again, kind of raises the question of if you're white, how do you deal with this pawn? Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a funny move. So like there, if queen c5, you can play, but then b4 is going to chase that knight back and away from the defense of this important pawn. Of course, that knight can't be taken because queen takes and that pawn is pinned over here. And so knight takes b5 is what stockfish chose in the game. I'm going to play bishop back over here, attacking this pawn, really making use of the pin. So I distracted the knight to take that pawn. Now it's going to come back. This is stockfish at its highest level. I gave it all the time in the world. Uh, and it is at level 8, which is the highest level it's going to go to. So I'm going to take this, 
and again make good use of my pin here. Rook f5, I'm going to recollect that knight fully. And I'm going to unleash the power of these rooks. So white is decided to swing that rook to e1, which was a good idea before going king c1. Because otherwise I go rook d1 check if that rook is still buried in there. And so here, maybe it looks like white can survive and start getting some pieces out. Maybe that's what Stockfish thought, but I'm going to go queen d6. And the point of queen d6 is I'm threatening rook d1, which is like basically checkmate. And it, But if they play bishop e2, there's rook c5, which is this other threat threatening to win the white queen. And I'm down like a full bishop here, but, you know, losing a rook for a queen, I would be up material. So Stockfish plays like this. Now queen g6 check just going back. So I couldn't go rook d1 because white would simply trade. And after queen takes d1, queen c1, and then I would be basically down a piece. So we need to keep these threats coming. And so here Stockfish finds nothing better than king c1 back. Because if king a1 or if queen c2, rook d1 is going to lead to checkmate. After takes, and then this other rook comes to d1, you can imagine that queen on c2, but that's going to be checkmate right there. So really nothing good for them to do. Stockfish is offering to repeat moves here, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, it goes back. And I'm hoping it shows another line. So queen to e4 is, a, it, it is another fun line here. So, but we're going to go rook d1 anyway. So now if rook takes, we have queen takes e4, just taking the queen whole, and it's check. So white cannot play like that. So I plays king c2. I can go check. Another great use of all these pins everywhere. I can't take my knight because of pins. So this king needs to keep coming out. This is like this crazy path this king has been on to just like try. It's gone back and forth there. Then it comes back out just to, just to try and hold on against all my threats. I can go check. <laughs> takes, takes. <laughs> I lost that rook. Uh, king c4. Okay, we go check. And at this point, the position is drawn. Because basically what happens is my rook guards all these squares, and the king can't escape this little box. <laughs> kind of a fun forced draw line I found against Stockfish at its highest setting. But um, you'll note this is just check, 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 check. And while I'm making these checks, I just want to say this opening was brought to you by Chess Mood. Uh, and it's like, oh no. William selling out. William is certainly not selling out. Uh, William got to Fide Master and, and a huge jump uh, in myself, my personal growth, both in terms of chess and as a person, genuinely. I literally don't have a cue card. I was not asked to say this, but um, it's been huge for me. Uh, the, the, the courses there are phenomenal. It improved my chess just like genuinely so, so much, even at an advanced level. And there's great beginner courses as well. Um, and... And this opening actually comes from their, their recommendation. This is in their repertoire. If you want to learn how to play the French with all sorts of fun, aggressive lines, uh, I would certainly recommend going there. Uh, I will paste a link in the description where if you use um, a promo code, I earn a, a small commission on it, but you guys get 20% off on an already existing discount, I believe. Uh, I think there's a money back guarantee. It is a absolutely fantastic service. I, I would certainly recommend. I'll leave that link in the description. But I hope you guys enjoy this uh, new video and this fun line. Go Chess Mood. Go Gambit lovers. Go McCutcheon Gambit. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out the link in the description. And Chess Mood. And have a fantastic day.